Good evening. I'm Uday Bhaska. Welcome to Wide Angle. This is a program that seeks to provide an objective and informed insight into current issues that are relevant to India's national security and related strategic concerns. In the middle of the election fervor, we look at recent developments related to Iran. And joining us in this discussion are two very experienced Iran watchers, Ambassador Pinak Chakravarti, who retired most recently as Secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs and has wide experience in the Middle East and other parts of the Arab world, and Mr. Pramit Pal Chaudhary, a familiar face, foreign affairs editor of the Hindustan Times, who has also been monitoring developments in and around Iran. Now, why Iran has come into focus over the last 10 days is really related to two issues. One is the so-called nuclear nettle. Iran and the kind of posture it had adopted as far as its own nuclear program was concerned. And the fact that between the US-led five permanent members of the Security Council plus Germany, that is the P5 plus 1, and the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, they have arrived at a possible deal which really had to do with how Iran would dilute existing uranium stocks. And the IAEA had issued a report last week saying that Iran is now complying with its part of the agreement. So what does that mean? Is it a big breakthrough? And secondly, Iran Afghanistan and India seem to be moving closer about establishing the equivalent of a sea, road and rail link that would go through the Iranian port of Chabahar, which is a little west of Gwadar, which is where China today is managing that particular port for Pakistan. What does that mean for India and for the entire region? So that really is the frame in which we propose to look at issues apropos Iran. Pramit, let me start with you if I may. Mm -hmm. How would you characterize the IAEA report and Iran's so-called compliance, maybe I should withdraw the word so-called, Iran's compliance with the various points that the P5 plus one and Iran had agreed to? Hmm. Well, the IAEA report is very positive and what, it's, what it does is reassure Iran that it is moving in the right, the in negotiations generally are moving in the right direction and, and to some degree it reassures the United States as well. Uh, and I think the Obama administration rightly has welcomed the report and said that's perfect, this is exactly what we want. And I think it boosts the general sense in Tehran, um, perhaps overly optimistic <coughs> that they can come to an agreement with the West on both lifting sanctions as well as putting a nominal cap uh, on their nuclear ability uh, sometime by this summer or by this fall. Uh, I would say that it's still a little overly optimistic as far as the Iranians are concerned because there's still a gap between where America wants to maintain their nuclear, uh, Iran's nuclear capacity, um, which would be to roll it back a lot further than Iran is probably prepared to accept. And the fact that lifting sanctions is actually a lot harder uh, politically within the United States, let alone within the European Union, uh, than it is imposing them. And the battle that already Obama is facing within yeah. the U.S. Congress, uh, and it is a U.S. Congress which Obama in any way has difficulties with and getting almost anything through. On most issues. On almost yeah. mo including most domestic issues. Yeah. Uh, and he really has a very small window because by November, if the midterm elections in the United States, which are present polling, you go by the Republicans seize control of the Senate. Uh, he will be unable to move anywhere Anything. forward. So you really have a small window. But right there now. is light at the end of this window. Anyway, there we'll come back to the nuclear. But Pinak, if I could ask you to perhaps explain to our viewers the relevance of the India-Afghanistan-Iran agreement and Chabahar in particular. Well, Chabahar, as you said, is not too far uh, west of uh, Gwadar. Uh, in fact, it is about 70 kilometers, Two kilometers, uh, yeah. 72 kilometers west of Gwadar. And uh, if you look at the, look at the map, you will probably see very clearly how it can connect uh, India via the sea route and then via Chahabar and the road and rail link up to into Afghanistan yeah. and then further on into 
into the Central Asian Central states. Asia. Now, the Central Asian states for India, uh, the, its importance really ri uh, lies in the fact that it is very rich in hydrocarbons. And but there is, uh, while they can evacuate the hydrocarbons into Europe and Russia and wherever else that they want to, it is to India that they cannot. And India is a market, uh, is a huge market for energy. Now, thanks to Pakistan, we have not been able to uh, get uh, get transit, for example, into Afghanistan and the Tapi pipeline, That's which right. uh, which has been in the works for quite That's some the time. That's the Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, That's the Turkmen. Pakistan, India pipeline. Absolutely, yeah. and that is what is supposed to bring gas to both the countries and I think that's a win-win situation for uh, for all the countries but that is not progressed because Afghanistan is uh, is a huge question mark in between although all countries have agreed they've signed on to to the to this pipeline and uh, various arrangements and other agreements have been signed but you need a major international consortium to push through this pipeline and there are there are elements of it that uh, that need to be put in place so Chahabahar can actually function as an anthropo for India's trade with, with uh, Afghanistan and the Central Asian states. And if, if we can actually uh, see it through in terms of investments, and India is supposed to invest there as, as well in building facilities yeah. and, uh, and upgrading facilities. We have also, always also built the connectivity between uh, Delaram and That's Zaranj. Right which will connect to the Iranian. That's uh, been done by the border roads organization. Border roads organization. And they did a and wonderful full job, them, full yeah. marks to them. They did a wonderful job, you know, the conditions in Afghanistan. So that, that is something that, is, uh, that, is, um, uh, that, that would help the connectivity of India with, the cent with, uh, with Afghanistan and Central. And to, to that extent, finesse the, the blocking role of by Pakistan. Pakistan. But, you know, Pramit, if I can come back to Chabahar, you mm -hmm. recall that yes. this was first noted in 2003. Yes. When we had the Iranian president then, Mr. Khatami. Khatami. He was the chief guest. Yes. Jan of 2003. Yeah. UPA 1 had not yet taken over. This was yeah. the NDA regime. And in 2014, we are still talking about getting Chabahar. <laughs> yes. So, you know, for the next few years, do you think that this is something that India would really be able to... Well, the game is basically to up to Iran. Do they think this is strategically important? The economics of it is, makes perfect sense. But there, to mean, for them, they have Bandar Sabar there. They have a huge port already sitting very close by. The game is, do you, are you willing, do you think it's strategically important enough for you to, min, to provide a land base, a land link, economic Correct. link, From. to Afghanistan? Because you, if you want to sustain an independent Kabul government, an independent at least of the Taliban and of Pakistan, uh, you have to provide that land link for us. And we are, then we can do that. We're prepared to pay for building some of that for you. The problem, I think, was twofold. One is that there was a division within Iran as to what exactly their Afghan policy was. And for a while, you may know, they, they dabbled with That's supporting right. the Taliban at one point because their primary concern was driving the Americans out, at which point, therefore, supporting the independent government, the government that was backed by the Americans was not necessarily seen, especially by some groups like the Islamic Revolutionary Guards, as being in the favor of, of, of Iran. Now, with the Americans withdrawing, the possibility, the strong possibility of the Taliban getting a foothold in, in Kabul, uh, there's now a much stronger sense in Iran that they need to be doing something, which is why we're so hopeful. And I, of my understanding at the Tehran National, at a non-aligned summit, when the, our Prime Minister Manman Singh met uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, Khomeini is very clear yeah, about this, that the Taliban are threat number one or number two as far as he's concerned to Iran. He does not want them on his border. Uh, that let me get, get Ahmadizad, the then president, the president, out of the way because he's a major barrier. He doesn't seem to understand any of this. And at this point, I'm going to be able to push all of this through. So my sense is that right now, Iran is clearly seeing that, that the, 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 the geopolitics of this is now very clear yeah. for Iran. So along with the economic logic, it would be fair to say that there is also a strategic correspondence. Yes, and, and I think the strategic correspondence is actually the, probably the most important aspect Afghanistan. of yeah. But, you know, I think we will perhaps try and understand what has changed in Iran. Yeah. We <coughs> now have a mm -hmm. new prime minister, a new president yes. in Iran. But we'll take a short break now and we'll come back. And Pinak, I'll request you to pick up the thread because you, I think, were present in Tehran when we had the swearing-in of President Rouhani.